The mid-1950s auto scene was a battleground. Detroit's giants Chevy, Ford, and Dodge were throwing big block muscle into the fight, each chasing horsepower bragging rights. Then came Studebaker, a much smaller player, armed not with size but with smarts. Their secret weapon? The 224V8, a compact, short-stroke engine that looked tiny on paper but punched way above its weight. It wasn't built to shatter records. It was built to prove that even independents could stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with the heavy hitters. Smooth, efficient, reliable, and surprisingly gutsy, the 224 carried Studebaker's hopes into the ring. Want to see how this underdog shocked the field? Stay with us, hit like and subscribe, and let's dive in. Back in 1955, Studebaker rolled out something unusual for a smaller, independent car maker. The 224.3 cubic inch V8, also known as the Bearcat. It was essentially a shortened stroke version of Studebaker's larger 259 V8, but it had its own personality. The 224 pumped out 140 horsepower at 4,500 RPM and 202 pound-feet of torque at 2,800 RPM, paired with a 7.5 to 1 compression ratio. On paper, that might not sound like much compared to the big boys in Detroit, but here's the catch. Studebaker managed to squeeze that performance out of a compact, lighter package. The trick was its 2.81-inch stroke compared to the longer stroke 259. The bore stayed at 3.56 inches, which kept the engine breathing freely. The result? A smoother running V8 that delivered better efficiency and refinement than the aging straight six it replaced. Drivers noticed it wasn't just about raw numbers. The 224 had a more balanced, easy revving character. It showed up briefly in early 1955 in Commanders and some light-duty trucks, where it proved reliable and surprisingly strong for its size. But by mid-1955, the 224 was phased out in favor of the 259, why? The 259 made similar mileage but added extra torque lower in the rev range, which buyers preferred. Even so, the 224 earned respect as Studebaker's smallest but smoothest V8. Here's something that surprises a lot of car fans. The Studebaker 224 V8 wasn't built for long at all. In fact, it was only offered during the first half of the 1955 model year, which makes it one of Studebaker's rarest engines. You could find it in the Commander lineup as the base V8 option, but before the year was even over, it was already gone. The engine itself was clever. It shared the 3.56-inch bore of the bigger 259 V8, but paired it with a shorter 2.81-inch stroke. That combination gave Studebaker a compact, lightweight V8 that ran smoother than the company's older six-cylinder, but still had decent muscle for its size. The 224 also made its way into Studebaker's E-Series trucks. Though mainly in lighter-duty models, buyers who needed heavier hauling got the 259 instead. This short production run and narrow market made the 224 a rare sight, even when it was new. Why did it vanish so quickly? The 259 offered similar fuel economy but delivered more torque, which was exactly what buyers wanted in cars and trucks. As a result, the 224 quietly faded mid-year. Today, that limited production makes it one of the most unique and collectible Studebaker V8s ever built. Alright, time to break down the numbers because sometimes the box score tells the story. The Studebaker 224 V8 clocked in at 224.3 cubic inches, 3.7 liters, built with a 3.6-inch bore and a 2.8-inch stroke. That short-stroke setup, it was like giving the engine quick feet. It revved faster, felt eager, and carried a lighter touch compared to its big brother, the 259 V8. And even though it was compact, Studebaker didn't cut corners. The block was full cast iron, backed with five main bearings, meaning durability was baked right in. This wasn't a fragile experiment. It was a solidly built small V8 with the toughness to go the distance. Now, let's put it in context. Drop the 224 into the 1955 Commander, which weighed around 3,060 pounds, approximately 1,388 kilograms, and suddenly you've got 140 horsepower at 4,500 RPM and 202 pound-feet of torque at 2,800 revolutions per minute pulling the load. That was enough to keep the car lively and balanced in daily driving. Sure, the 259 had more muscle, 162 horsepower in base trim, but it was heavier and less eager to spin. The 224, on the other hand, had the pep and smoothness that made it feel modern for its time. So, was it the biggest? But was it smart, efficient, and full of fight? Absolutely. Want to know what trick Studebaker pulled next? All right, let's talk speed. Because at the end of the day, numbers on paper don't mean much until you see how a car actually moves. 
So what did the Studebaker 224V8 really do when the light turned green? Factory tests of a 1955 Commander Deluxe four-door sedan with the 224 showed 0 to 60 miles per hour in about 12.7 seconds and the quarter mile in roughly 18.9 seconds. Not a drag strip king, but not embarrassing either. Other carefully controlled tests painted a slower picture with 0 to 60 miles per hour, taking around 14.9 seconds. Most real-world numbers fell somewhere between 12 and 15 seconds, with top speeds brushing just over 100 miles per hour depending on the body style. Now, line that up with Detroit's heavy hitters, Oldsmobile's Rocket V8, Dodge's early Hemi, and Ford's Y-Block, and you'll see those cars dipping into the 10 to 11 second zone. Yes, the Studebaker was a step or two behind, but here's the twist. It was close enough to stay in the game. And that's the story. The 224 wasn't built to crush quarter mile times. It was built to prove Studebaker could play on the same court as Detroit. For a small, short stroke V8 from a company fighting giants, keeping pace at all was a big win. Think that's surprising? Wait until you hear the next stat line. Here's a question you probably don't expect when talking about a mid-50s V8. Could it actually sip fuel instead of guzzling it? Believe it or not, the Studebaker 224 V8 pulled off some impressive numbers. In a real road test of a 1955 Regal Deluxe Commander with automatic drive, the car hit a best of 23.1 miles per gallon. Let that sink in, because back then, most V8s were struggling to crack 18 to 20 miles per gallon on a good day. So how did this little motor do it? Credit the short 2.81-inch stroke and those modern cylinder heads it shared with the 259. That combo meant cleaner breathing, better combustion, and less wasted fuel. In plain terms, the 224 was efficient without feeling weak. Even in Studebaker's E-Series light trucks, the story was the same. Compared to the old Flathead 6, the 224 not only ran smoother, but often returned better mileage, especially with lighter loads. Sure, results varied with gearing and use, but drivers noticed it was consistently less thirsty than larger V8s. Which ultimately means the 224 wasn't just Studebaker proving it could build a small, smooth V8. It was Studebaker showing that power and efficiency could live in the same package. And in 1955, that was almost unheard of. Think that's good? Wait till you hear how Studebaker squeezed even more out of this tiny V8. And here is where things get tricky. Ask 10 Studebaker fans how many 224 V8s rolled out in 1955, and you'll probably get 10 different answers. What we do know is this. The 224 was only built for the first half of the 1955 model year before Studebaker swapped it out for the bigger 259. That short run means it's rare. Really rare. But how rare? That's the million dollar question. Studebaker never published a clear factory breakdown. Some commanders left the line with the 224 and a handful of early E-Series half-ton trucks carried it too. Heavier duty trucks? They quickly shifted to the 259. So depending on who you ask, production was either a few hundred units or maybe a few thousand at most. And that's why enthusiasts are still arguing about it nearly 70 years later. The lack of hard numbers leaves the 224 floating in this gray area, officially mentioned in brochures, yet strangely absent from precise records. This uncertainty has only added to its mystique. While other Studebaker V8s were built in large volumes, the 224 is often called the rarest of the family, except for the ultra-scarce R3 and R4 experimental engines. That mystery makes it more than just a motor. It's a legend, and legends always keep people guessing. Want to know what Studebaker did next to make this little V8 even more interesting? The most fun part about Studebaker was that it didn't put the 224 V8 in some tiny lightweight where it could coast by. Nope, they dropped it into the 1955 Commander, a car with real presence. Think of it. The Commander stretched 202.2 inches long with a 116.5 inch wheelbase. That's no compact. It was a proper mid-size sedan with the proportions to match. And here's the thing, even the lighter two-door coupe tipped the scales at about 3,060 pounds, approximately 1,388 kilograms. On paper, that sounds like way too much for a small V8 to handle. 
you'd expect it to feel sluggish, right? Wrong. Thanks to its short stroke design, the 224s had a rev-happy personality. It made the Commander feel far more responsive than its size suggested, almost like it was punching above its weight class. That's what makes this pairing so fascinating. Studebaker wasn't chasing sports cars or economy boxes. It was selling a roomy family sedan, then surprising buyers by powering it with the smallest V8 in its lineup. And the crazy part? It worked. The Commander came off as solid and refined, yet surprisingly lively. That contrast, big body, small but spirited engine, is exactly why enthusiasts still talk about the 224s today. It was an underdog matchup that played out better than anyone expected. Think that's bold? Wait until you see how Studebaker kept tweaking the 224 to make it even sharper. The Studebaker 224 V8 was created by shortening the stroke of the 259, giving Studebaker a compact, quick revving engine without starting from scratch. Both engines shared the same 3.56 inch bore, but the 224 used a much shorter 2.81 inch stroke, the smallest in the family. This gave it a smoother, more eager character at higher RPMs, something Studebaker hadn't offered before. But those gains came with trade-offs. Even though it displaced only two 24 cubic inches, the block itself was still physically large and heavy, borrowing architecture closer to Cadillac's V8s. That meant it carried more weight over the front axle than you'd expect for an engine of its size, which affected balance and handling slightly. Another compromise was in the airflow. Studebaker's conservative valve and port design worked well for durability and efficiency, but limited breathing at higher speeds. That meant the 224 couldn't unleash the horsepower numbers that its lively stroke suggested. It was capped at around 140 horsepower. So what you ended up with was a refined, reliable V8 that felt sprightlier than the old 6s, but not a high-performance star. It was a smart compromise, lighter than the 259, smoother to run, and efficient for its time, yet still held back by weight and conservative design choices. Every great play comes with trade-offs, and the Studebaker 224 V8 was no different. On paper, it looked like a clever shortcut. Instead of designing a brand new engine, Studebaker simply shortened the stroke of its 259. Both shared the same 3.56-inch bore, but the 224 carried a much shorter 2.81-inch stroke the smallest in the Studebaker V8 family. The payoff? A smoother, rev-happy motor with a character Studebaker hadn't shown before. But here's where the give and take comes in. Even though it displaced only two 24 cubic inches, the block was still physically large and heavy, closer in heft to Cadillac's big V8s. That extra weight sat over the front axle, making the car feel a little nose-heavy. Not a deal breaker, but definitely a factor in balance and handling. Airflow was another compromise. Studebaker's conservative valve and port design was great for longevity and fuel efficiency, but it also put a lid on high RPM power. The 224 topped out at around 140 horsepower, which meant it never hit the performance numbers its lively stroke seemed to promise. So what you got was a refined, reliable V8 that felt peppier than the old 6s yet not a street racer. It was smart, efficient, and smooth, but also limited by its own heavy build and cautious design. Think that's the end of the story? Wait until you see how Studebaker fought back with tweaks to airflow and valves. Ah, the classic Studebaker sibling showdown, 224 versus 259. At first glance, these two looked nearly identical. Both carried the same 3.56 inch bore, shared the same cast iron block, and came straight from the same Studebaker DNA. But when you dig deeper, one small number changes everything, stroke length. The 224 ran a short 2.81 inch stroke, while the 259 stretched it to 3.3 inches. That difference gave the 259 a huge edge in torque and everyday drivability. On paper, the 224 made 140 horsepower and 202 pound-feet of torque. Solid, no doubt. But the 259 cranked out 162 horsepower and around 250 pound-feet of torque. And here's the kicker. That torque showed up down low, exactly where family sedans and work trucks needed it most. Now, you'd expect the bigger engine to be thirstier, right? Not in this case. The 259 returned nearly identical fuel economy to the 224. That meant more grunt without any real penalty at the pump. A huge selling point in the mid-1950s. So, where does that leave the 224s? It was lighter on its feet, smoother to rev, and had a character all its own. But in the real world, the 259 was the practical pick. 
Stronger, more versatile, and just as efficient, it was the engine that kept Studebaker competitive. Still, doesn't the 224 feel like the scrappy underdog here? The little brother with plenty of fight, but never quite given the chance to shine? So, how did the 224 V8 land when it first hit the streets in 1955? Pretty well, actually. The press and early owners agreed. It wasn't a powerhouse, but it was a well-mannered, refined little engine that gave Studebaker some serious credibility. Testing at the time showed the bump from 120 to 140 horsepower, proving Studebaker wasn't just phoning it in. Road testers praised its steady, idle, and smooth delivery, pointing out how friendly it felt in traffic and on the open road. It wasn't jumpy, it wasn't rough, it was easy to live with. Years later, Auto Week nailed it. Starts nicely, idles nicely, it runs nicely, behaves itself. That's the 224 in a nutshell. Of course, the comparisons came fast. Chevrolet had just rolled out its 265 V8, which packed more power in a lighter body. By raw numbers, the 224s couldn't win that fight. But here's the thing, it didn't have to. Owners valued the smoothness, durability, and reliability the 224s delivered day after day. It wasn't built to dominate, it was built to perform without drama. And in that lane, it absolutely scored. The 224 may not have been flashy, but it earned quiet respect as the polished underdog of its time. So, was the Studebaker 224 V8 just a short-lived curiosity, or was it really built to last? Talk to people who owned one, and you'll hear the same thing over and over. This tiny V8 was way tougher than anyone expected. One longtime owner bragged about running his 1955 224 powered three quarter ton truck for more than 30 years without ever cracking the engine open. Other than normal tune up parts like plugs and points, the motor never gave him a reason to worry. Stories like that are common in Studebaker groups. The secret? Overbuilt engineering. Even though the 224 was the smallest V8 in the lineup, it wasn't built on a flimsy foundation. It used the same rugged cast iron block and five main bearing bottom end as its bigger siblings, giving it strength that most small displacement V8s of the 1950s simply didn't have. With steady oil changes and careful driving, these engines regularly cleared 150,000 miles and many pushed close to 190,000 miles before needing anything major. That kind of lifespan was practically unheard of in the mid-50s, when plenty of engines struggled to survive past 100,000 miles without a rebuild. Here's the key. It wasn't tuned for max horsepower. Instead, the 224 struck a balance. Smooth, efficient, and unstressed. By not chasing big numbers, Studebaker gave it the durability to shrug off decades of use. So while the 224 might have been the smallest V8 in the family, it turned out to be one of the toughest and most reliable a true underdog that outlived expectations and owners. In the end, from its short-stroke design to its surprising efficiency and durability, the Studebaker 224 V8 proved that small didn't mean weak. Sure, it wasn't the most powerful engine of its era, and its run was short, but it left a mark. Against Chevy's 265 Ford's Y-Block and Dodge's Hemi, the 224 showed Studebaker could still swing hard with limited resources. It was the smoothest, most refined V8 Studebaker built, and its reliability gave it a legend that outlived its production. Some call it forgotten, others call it underrated, but no one can deny its charm. So would you pick underdog finesse or big block dominance? Tell us in the comments, and don't forget to like, subscribe, and join us for the next ride.